Hello everyone, it's your favorite Senso Tech Jedi Lisa here, and in this video we are going to be talking about the console users area of the admin center. I've gone ahead logged in, I've gone over to my admin uh, portal, and now I'm going to go down into the console users area. Um, you may hear us reference this as portal users or console users, it's the same thing. We're talking about any users that you are going to give access to log in to the Senso portal to view devices devices and manage those devices. Now you see there are a lot of options in here so this video may be slightly longer than the other ones just because there's a lot of things to go over. Um, so typically I would just go right down the list but I kind of want to do this in the order of how we recommend setting this up. So the first place I'm going to go is manage roles. Now a role is going to be, think of this as a template. It is a predefined template that you will assign to your users that you set up how you want them to access the portal, meaning the tools they have access to, the devices they have access to, the sites, groups, etc. This is all going to be here in the manage roles area. Now you see I have some already set up, but I'm going to go ahead and click on the I'm I, I think it's a green plus sign. I will I'll be honest with you. I am colorblind. So if I reference things and I call them the wrong color, I apologize because it's all gray to me. So I'm going to assume that that's green or gray plus sign. And we're going to go in to create a role. The first place it's going to take you is to the general area. Now this is where you are going to name the role. So we're just going to name this one test role just for the purposes of we're creating this role for this video. Um, to, oh, be so like clear. It's like naming files that you're going to try to find later. Like really name this safeguarding role, teacher role, principal role, um, head person role uh, that's a little bit too generic but I'm just saying really be uh, as descriptive as you can when naming these roles so that when you are assigning them you know exactly you know you know what it is that you're assigning to your users now after we have named this you're going to apply this role to um, what they can see in the portal now this is going to be in a separate video where we talk about sites so um, you can apply it to all sites meaning they can see all sites or you can do user assigned sites now this is dynamic I'm gonna go ahead so this will be a dynamically applied role so let me explain what this means in that you can create this role and as you are adding in your users, you can then give them this role that has the same permissions and modules and everything else on there, but then say that they have different access to different sites. So if you make a change to the role, you don't have to then go in and make a change to all the individual users. You're just you know, making it to the global role that you have assigned, but then you can dynamically assign a site that they can see. So like a teacher role would be a perfect example of setting up a dynamic role for user assigned sites, a generic teacher role that goes out to everyone, but you're going to have different teachers at different levels, high school teachers, middle school teachers, different, you know, different grade levels that they're in charge of that you want to set up sites that they can only see. So that's what user assigned sites means. And then the following site, you can even be more specific and say this role is only for this site or if you leave this blank meaning you select it and don't select any sites then you could really be very restrictive with access that is a separate video and I will link to um, the description below for access but I encourage you to read the article about restricting group access because this is a way that you can use that as well also this is a great way to utilize our integrations clever teams Google classroom where they only see the integrations that they have created or you have supplied them, whether it be a Google integration role or a Teams role or a Clever role, so that they don't see anything except those that have been synced for them. So essentially you would select this and leave it blank. For this purposes, um, I'm not going to select anything because really I'm just showing you how to create it, but that gives you an idea of so many options you have as for what they can see within their portal. Okay, permissions. Wow, there's a lot of options here in permissions. This is going to be everything they can see within the portal. 
again, there's so much granularity that we have given you as far as setting up these roles. Now for permissions, do you want them to view the admin center? Um, and then you can see when I click on that, that's everything in the admin center or maybe you want them to view the admin center, but then be very selective about what they can view in the admin center. So all of these options, make sure you go through and see what you can set up for these users that you want to have access to the admin center. In the general area, this is going to be things like adding groups, editing groups, edit preferences. This is something that is, um, you may not understand what that is. If you go up to the top right hand corner in your portal where your name is and go to profile, there is a way to edit preferences for how your console is set up. Meaning, do you want dark mode, high contrast mode? Do you want to go into a specific site when it loads? Do you want to pop right into thumbnail view? You can give your users the option to to edit their own console preferences. So that's a really handy one that you might want to give your users so they can set that up themselves. Um, again, look through these, remove groups, you know, read through all of these. Now, another one that I want to highlight right here is live chat. This is not the live chat module that you can live chat back and forth with your users. This is the live chat module you have with us. So if you do not want, and we suggest this, your teachers to have access to a live chat with us and you want it to go through someone who, you know, your IS, your IT person on campus, Campus, there's always an on-site person that you want to work with that then people submit tickets to and then they submit it to us and we help you that you might want to turn that off for your general uh, users and have that option available for your admin users. So this is different than the live chat. This is live chat to your superheroes in the support area of Senso, not the live chat module. Okay, logging. Now this is an important one. You may want to set this up for your safeguarding officers, your counselors, your principals, whomever you want to have access to the admin just to view logging. So again, you'll see here, you'll need to give them just view admin center up here, but then you can be very selective as to what they can view as far as the logging information within the admin center. And then data sync. Again, for all of those really great integrations we have, you can access, uh, limit access to who can see and what they can do within the integrations for that data sync. Wow, that's a lot of options. I know uh, it's like you got to keep scrolling to get through everything, but that's good. All right. The next tab we're going to go to is modules. This is what they see at that top toolbar of options they have for tools they can utilize. I mean, you can give them no tools and just have them access, let's say, in a safeguarding role. They really don't need to have any tools. They just need to access the admin center for the logging. You could set it up where they don't have any tools at all. So coming in here, you can select all the tools, of course, or you can come in and be very selective about which tools that you give them. Now, my suggestion here is, again, I will link the KB article in the description box below. We have given you some recommended settings for different roles as far as the modules that you give them. And that's going to be the tools that they see at the top. Role visibility. Now the next tab for role visibility is the sites that they, well, let me back up a little bit. This is going to be for um, the roles that they can see. So if you have a technician on site that you give access to the admin center and you want them to be able to create users, you can limit which roles they can see to assign to those users. So if you don't want, a, let's say you're an MSP, or a technician using this software and you work with a lot of different schools, you may have an on-site tech that you don't want the ability to assign a role that's for another school to the school that they're at. So this is role visibility. These are the roles that they can see and they can assign. And then login restrictions. These are the times that your users can access the portal. So anytime outside of this that they have that you have set, they cannot access the portal. It gives them a message that says, no, you can't access it. 
you have to come back at another time. You can even restrict it to the public IP address of your network. Now, with this being said, this is a role login restrictions. This is going to be overarching. When we talk about managed users, you can modify this for individual users. Let's say, for example, you have a, a Saturday school teacher or an educator that works, you know, longer hours than other teachers. You can come back in, give them, you know, this role, but then modify their individual user to give them extended hours for when they're on site. Wow, that's a lot of options just for manage roles. Okay, so that's how you create a role. Now let's go back up to manage users. Again, gray or green, it's dealer's choice on what color that is. When you're ready, after you've created your role, then you're ready to go ahead and create your users. Here you will put their email address in and every and when you put their email address in, it automatically ties into the single sign-on. So if you are a Google or Microsoft Office 365, it will go ahead and tie into that and they can single sign-on. Display name is very important. This is going to be the name that the end users see when they send files, they start a live chat, anything like that. So if you put it like Mrs. Johnson or Mr. Smith or whatever they like to be called in the classroom, I definitely recommend putting in their display name so it doesn't just show up as the default, which is console user. Now send verification email. This is going to send um, when you create this user an email that lets them know that they can change their password and log in to the portal. It's up to you if you want to do this or not. My recommendation is to turn this off until you have everything set up completely. Have all the back end stuff set up first and then let your users know they have access to the portal. You can always resend the verification email later or again if you're using the um, single sign-on with something like Google or Microsoft Office 365, there is no need for them to change their password to log in. Now, if you send them a verification email and they do change their password, they can still use the SSO. It's fine. Um, it's going to take them to the same portal, so don't worry about that. Now, the data sync, if you have any integration set up, primarily things like Clever or Google Classroom, you will need to go ahead and make sure that the data sync is enabled. If you leave it on, it's not going to hurt anything. If you don't have any integrations, maybe that's something you're moving forward to, you can just leave it on. Now the next thing to choose is your role. What role is this user going to be assigned to? Now the next tab over is alerting. This is part of our safeguarding feature. If you want this user to receive email alerts from critical violations that have been occurring, then you can set that here and you can even be specific that they can only see alerts from specific sites. Great for counselors, uh, safety officers, principals, um, headmasters, whomever that are assigned to a specific site or building. Site assignment. This again is in conjunction with that access um, information that I'm going to put in the description below. When you are restricting access to a specific site, and again this is that dynamic site that we talked about earlier, this is where you would dynamically set up their sites that they have access to and also how you can restrict um, them to a specific site that they need to view. And remember I said about the login restrictions where you can come in and individual users can have different login restrictions than the role itself. This is where you will set it for this console user. And of course, when you're done, click confirm. All right, import users. Now, you may not want to do this manually. Of course, you don't want to do this manually unless you are, you know, individual teachers. You can download a CSV template once you've created the role, and then you can, it will show you things like, it, it's very, very simple to use. You put their their name, their email name in, um, their display name, what sites they're going to be assigned to, that sort of information, and then you upload it. Again, I will put an, a link to the article in the description below. I feel like I'm going to say that a lot in this video. Okay, the other areas that we have in here are audit logs. Anything that anyone does within the portal is 
audited. This is for privacy and safety concerns and just, you know, it's really good so that you, um, an organizational admin or anybody else on campus that needs to know what the users are doing within the portal, it's all logged here in the audit logs. Anytime they access device, whatever tools, whatever messages they send, what have you, will be here in the audit logs. Now the reason it says audit logs and audit logs legacy is we've actually changed that to make it a little bit easier for you to be able to get through that information. If you've watched my other videos, I talk about data where we give you a ton of data but it doesn't do you any good if you can't parse through it very easily. Our development team is amazing and what they've done is they've given you a little bit clearer picture of going through the audit logs. So here you see you can um, just go through those logs, you can see what anybody is doing, you can search for a specific user, you can search for a specific action, all of that within the audit logs. Now these are read-only logs so if they need to be submitted in court they could be um, because again you can't modify or change these logs. Anything past a certain date when we made this change will be in the audit logs legacy. This will not contain any new logs past that date. These are just the old logs you have. Anything new past that date will be here in the audit logs. So you see here everything I'm done today. I've gone into auditing. I've looked at the admin center. Let me go ahead and click on that so you can see expand that out further. If I can get it to expand, <laughs> you can see what I'm doing here. It's basically just filtering it down. What I'm doing is it's going through and it's filtering it out for me to show me those logs of information that I'm doing. Now I can export this to a CSV. I can print it out and then of course clear those filters so you can see everything and you can see things like the parameters of when I started accessing things and things like that. So audit logs are very important. Now delegated user audit takes us over here into delegated users. Now delegated users is going to be because there's a lot of email addresses in here. I'm going to just go back to audit logs. Delegated users is if you are an MSP and you are in uh, charge of a lot of school districts and you want to have them all within one portal but then you want to choose which portal you want to access so that you can offer support. Also, your Senso superhero, your dedicated support person within Senso may ask you to add them as a delegated user. We do not have access to your portal unless you give us delegated access. So then we can see it, we can help you through support things without having to be on a remote session or a call. And then after that, you can remove us. So that's really what a delegated user is. And of course, just like everything else, anything that a delegated user is doing is audited as as well so that you can go back and see what they've done within your portal. All right guys, whew, that was a lot of information to get through today and I hope that I have covered everything and I haven't forgotten anything and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!